Hello and welcome to the CCNP routing and switching course offered by Simply Learn. In the previous lesson, we learned about link aggregation. In this lesson, we will look into traditional spanning tree. Let us begin with the objectives of the lesson in the next slide. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain STP and its versions, configure root switch, port priority, timer, and cost. Explain BPDUs and tie-breaking in BPDU. Explain the functions of root bridges. Describe topology changes and its types. Let us start our discussion on spanning tree protocol in the next slide. STP solves three interrelated problems in a switching domain. When there are bridging loops, duplicate frames can occur, which leads to MAC table instability. This can cause broadcast storms, which may disable a network. Always enable STP on all switches in a Layer 2 domain. If STP is disabled, bridging loops are not detected and prevented. Spanning tree is enabled by default for all virtual local area networks. In the next slide, let us look into the different versions of STP. There are many versions of STP. As seen in the table, the original is 802.1D, Common Spanning Tree, CST. The default version used on most Cisco switch platforms is PVST+, now known as PVST. RSTP and MSTP are additional standard versions. PVRST+, is Cisco's implementation of Rapid Spanning Tree, RST. In the next slide, let us focus on bridge ID. Each switch has a bridge ID, which is the basis for STP configuration. Most switches use an extended system ID. This consists of a 4-bit priority multiplier, a 12-bit VLAN ID, and the MAC address. The bridge ID is assigned in increments of 4096. In the next slide, let us look at the root bridge also called the root switch. 